everyone. Welcome back to the Dally Society. I've got a very special episode today. Can you believe it's been one whole year? Can you, one whole year? I can't believe it myself. Since I started this channel, now not only is it my one year anniversary on the Dally Society, but it's also the wonderful Alex Judge from Alex Judge Sews. She's also got her one year YouTube anniversary as well. So we decided to do a little collab for you guys just to celebrate our one year on YouTube and to bring you a wonderful pattern review. One pattern done two ways. So stay tuned and we'll let you know all about it. So a big thank you to everyone who subscribed to my channel. You have really elevated it to the next level. I cannot believe we're heading towards six and a half thousand mark. Uh, when I first started this channel, I remember thinking my first 100 subscribers was really wonderful. And any look, any number of people watching and enjoying the program um, is really worthwhile to me. I really did not expect to reach this level of subscribers this early on. So I've got to say a huge thank you for that. Time really does fly in the YouTube world. I must admit, it really doesn't feel like work to me. Um, this is my job at the moment. I am putting all my effort into this channel to bring you guys up to date content, new pattern reviews, and just mainly sewing inspiration. So I can really um, put 100 100% of my time and effort into this and I really hope you guys have enjoyed the content that the first year has brought to you. Now the wonderful Alex Judge, uh, she's reached out to me and said look let's do a collab, we've both got the same uh, anniversary week and I couldn't quite believe it when I saw that and I do remember seeing my anniversary was the 13th of September, see 13 is a very lucky number for me. Uh, we got married on the 13th of November, hubby's birthday is the 13th of May. It's just a number that comes up for me quite often and I do associate it with being very lucky so I am very lucky to have all of you guys watching every week and commenting and enjoying every episode as well and Alex did say that her anniversary is the ninth so yeah we've come up with a wonderful collab we are both showcasing a beautiful jacket called the Mallard jacket So Alex and I have got quite a bit in common. You'll notice that we're both fiery redheads. We both love to sew. We are both very similar age. We have kids similar age as well, still living at home. So we are, yeah, we've both got quite a bit in common. And the thing I love most about Alex is I love watching what she sews because I'm one of those people that uh, I find her very inspiring. I find her fashion and her sense of style very similar to what I would choose. A lot of the times our colour choices are very very similar um, similar style prints and we both love sewing things that we can wear so really practical things things that we can get a lot of wear out so if you haven't subscribed to alex's channel this is your chance now to look below in the links you'll see i've linked her channel there you must make sure you get on and follow her because i'm sure you'll find her very inspiring as do i so go ahead and follow alex and you can also see this episode which i'll link as well you can jump on board to see what she has made with the same pattern so this pattern is the mallard coat from sewing revival sewing revival is a new zealand company and i know janine uh, runs the sewing revival has got some wonderful patterns some very versatile things to make and practical everyday garments that I know you'll get the wear out of. This is the pattern. I have downloaded the pattern. I have printed it out just from PDF. And one thing that Alex and I both agreed on, we both wanted to make something that we knew we'd both love. We're both affiliates for the Sewing Revival. So uh, any sales from this particular pattern will give, give us a small commission to put towards our channel. Um, and we both agreed we wanted it to be something that we really believed in the garment and we believed in the pattern designs. So I really wanted to make sure that we um, chose something that you guys are going to enjoy making and also because I'm in Australia southern hemisphere weather we're heading into spring Alex in the UK you guys are heading into autumn cool weather we wanted a versatile trans seasonal piece that we know you guys could either make for summer or for winter and this is that perfect pattern the mallard coat you'll see it comes in sizes New Zealand 8 to 22 it's difficulty level 3.5 out of 5. I would say it's a good intermediate make. I think there's quite a few things here that are heading into that intermediate to advanced level of sewing, but nothing that's too scary for a beginner to take on because I know when people start out sewing, a lot of the time you want to make something that you 
you know, if you've seen in a store that you want to buy um, and then you want to personalize it to what fabric you want to make it in. So you don't always want to be making those simple basic makes. Sometimes you really want to get something that's quite detailed and also that you could spend your time making and put a bit of effort into. The great thing about the Mallard coat is that you can make it in so many different fabrics. You can make it in two different lengths two different collar shapes so you've either got your stand-up collar which can also lay flat as well um, the stand-up collar I just think is really unique and different I haven't seen a lot of jackets around with that kind of um, collar or you can make it with your rounded collar as well so you can do it in two different lengths and you can also make a variety of different adjustments to it it has a beautiful flap style pocket I really love the pocket detail that's one of the things that I must say that attracted me in the first place was that beautiful pocket detail and the fact that I didn't want to make a buttonhole because I wasn't quite sure what fabric I wanted to do it in for quite a while. And then I realized that if you're going to use a really thick fabric, sometimes that can be very challenging to do a good, neat buttonhole. I went for the dome closures and they actually give you a bit of a tutorial on how to sew that couture style dome stitching if you want to make that a feature of your garment. I've only opted to put three buttons in because my jacket is the crop length. Now I probably won't be wearing it done up. I'll be wearing it undone most of the time. So I'll give you a bit of a look to see that I've decided the button closures, probably um, most of the time I'll probably be just doing up that middle one and leaving it undone. But I think it looks great either way. But the dome closures are really practical and really great for those thick kind of woolen felted fabrics as well. Now I've made this in a gorgeous Liberty Lantana fabric. I think it's called Monaco, Minaco. Um, now this was from the fabric store online. This fabric was actually some remnants that I scored. I think they had two cuts. There was a meter and a, uh, I think one meter and 1.3 meters, but they're both separate cuts. And I thought that's plenty to do my crop style jacket. The thing about the lantana that I love is that for spring, it's perfect for me because it is a wool and cotton mix. I think it's 80% cotton, 20% wool. So a really great lightweight spring jacket but with that touch of warmth. Um, and it's a fully lined jacket as well. I actually made up the bare bones of the jacket without putting any of the details on and with an old bed sheet just to get that kind of fit. I wanted to make sure it was going to fit me perfectly around the shoulders and across the back because I know that when you do make a jacket and you put that lining in, sometimes you can get a little bit of a restriction, especially if you're wearing a sweater underneath or a knitted top and you have a bit more bulk, you want to make sure that the uh, jacket isn't restrictive when you're moving around. So I love the fact that size 16, perfect for me. Um, I really didn't need to make any alterations other than the length of my sleeve. Now, the only adjustment I did make was to the sleeve length. I always, always have to take length off my sleeves. I find that most of the time patterns do give you extra length um, so you've got to make sure that you you know you test that out before you make your final cuts and especially with things like lining so I did adjust the pattern I took about a good 10 centimeters off the length of the sleeve but you've got to make sure you do that in your lengthening and shortening line you don't want to do it right on the end because there is a slight curve of the edge of where the cuff is so that was quite easy to do but yeah really happy with the, the fit I definitely uh, would recommend this jacket for especially for to say a beginner to intermediate sewers as well as someone who's more advanced. And the wonderful thing about the Mallard jacket is that it can be made in such a variety of fabrics. You can either go for a auto winter weight, which is things like boiled wools, felted wools, cashmere's, heavier canvas style fabrics, or even things like upholstery fabrics. Now you can get such a great variety of upholstery fabrics. There's some beautiful weights and some beautiful stitch details, but you have to make sure that they, you know that normally an upholstery fabric does not have that same kind of drape. So you may find them a little bit more restrictive to wear. So you've got to make sure that you get that fit right uh, in your wearable 12 first before you go cutting into that nice fabric because it will be more of a stiff kind of make but you really can do a lot with upholstery fabrics and the spring summer weight which is what I've gone for this is as I say the wool and cotton blend you can do anything like a canvas a cotton linen a cotton sateen which I've seen has come up beautiful quite a lot of people have made that you can use like a quilted cotton style fabric as well so really the the uh, fabric choices are endless it really just depends on the kind of weight and drape you want to give the garment but i particularly would love to see this uh in a sort of autumn winter weight oil wool it's my favorite thing to sew a winter weight jacket out of but i've already got quite a few wintry jackets so i thought spring jacket for me this is the perfect lightweight 
uh, fabric. I think this could even be done in a beautiful corduroy fabric. I think cord is an amazing fabric to wear all year round. It's really versatile. It gives you that little bit of warmth and that bit of structure, but you can quite easily throw it on sort of to a, a summery dress or a winter weight dress. Even a denim in this, I think, would be perfect as well. Even a lot, the long line in a denim, I think, would look wonderful. You could put a lot of stitching details in that. We'll give you a bit of a look on the inside. We've done it with a fully lined in a navy lining fabric, and you've got your stitched in my little label there. But you'll really find the lining not as daunting. I think a lot of people get really scared off by fully lined jackets because of the amount of work. But it's really just like making two of the same jacket because you're inserting it into the the outer coat you're putting the lining on the inside and then you're stitching in a lot of the details to the facings which is pretty simple and straightforward actually um i must say a lot of the details in the jacket i found were really precise this really does uh take you through from start to finish things like overlocking the edges there's quite a few details that will make a really neat straightforward sew i think that's one thing she's basically teaching you is to really clean up your edges and things like that before you sew the jacket and you won't have that sort of messy um sort of thread hanging out especially with things like lining if you don't overlock the edges sometimes you'll find that they'll fray and yet you can get yourself into quite a bit of a mess so things like shoulder pads as well are optional you can always insert a um, nice sort of shoulder pad if you're like me and you do have slightly dropped shoulders i find sometimes a shoulder pad can work really well for balancing you out but i've decided to opt out of the shoulder pad i didn't really need that i think it's more of a casual style jacket this one but i'm really excited to see what alex has done i know she's done a more of a warmer winter weight coat um I'm, yeah i'm dying to see what she's done so yeah um, pop over and watch her episode after mine if you're doing this one first definitely see what she's come up with i think that's the great thing about being a sewist is you can really uh, interpret the pattern how you wish you show your own creative um, edge there on what you want to give your garment um, there's no two people will ever choose the same thing i think sometimes a pattern envelope can give you a little bit of an inspiration and make you want to go and um, you know if you see a red skirt you know you know it's going to look good so you might pick the red fabric and the same thing for a coat um, really it can play a lot on your mind when you're looking at the garment on that pattern envelope to the choices you make for fabric but i think sometimes it's great to just use a little bit of your own instinct with things especially with fabric pick something that you know that will go back with what you've got in your current wardrobe what you can mix and match back through with colors and always think about prints. I think a lot of people will tend to make a coat or a jacket in a plain fabric because it really does give a nice bold statement. But sometimes a fun print can really work well for um, mixing and matching back through. You can wear it over a plain dress or a plain pair of jeans and t-shirt like I've done here today. And you can really give things that little bit of a um, creative spin of your own. I made this in just under two meters of fabric. And make sure you've got enough fabric to do things like your inner facings. And if you don't want to do your inner facings the same, I think you could possibly pick up a contrasting color. I think it's important too to look out for a lining that's a similar color to your garment because when you're sewing on your pockets, you'll notice that it's got a inner lining in the lining fabric. And when you're sewing that on the front, you don't want to be catching any of that lining fabric on the outside. So that will actually really stand out against your fabric. So always choose the lining fabric um, for the pockets, especially to be either the same or the same as the light darker color lining, because I think that way it will blend in. You won't notice it as much. But I just really enjoyed the whole process. I think it made me realize that sometimes it's good to slow down and take in every process and really take your time and sew a really lovely couture style garment. Also, it gives you a great pleasure in wearing it when you know you've put, you know, you've invested a, a lot more time and put more time into the little detail. I'll link this fabric as well. This is uh, the fabric store online. Um, I, they do have other colorways left, but not this particular colorway because of course this is the remnant. Um, but I really, uh, I think they've got three other colorways in this particular lantana and another print in the lantana as well, but it's really light beautiful and light and has got a lovely drape as well so there's no stiffness like you would normally get in a heavier weight wool or drill fabric so that's what I loved about it when I saw it I thought this is perfect for me and I just used a nice lightweight interfacing I have got a fusible interfacing she does give the option to use a fusible or non-fusible interfacing if you wanted to sew it straight in you can do that but it does give that nice little bit of structure and you can see here the way the collar you can sit the collar down or you can you know, sit the collar up it really just depends on the way you want to wear it but it gives it that little bit more of a casual feel i think um yeah especially for jeans and t-shirts so really happy with the make i'll love to make more of these i think this is going to be a staple style 
jacket for the wardrobe. And yeah, things like your buttons, you can use toggles, you can use those little loops, um, you could do a proper traditional buttonhole, um, or you can use your little dome closures, which is what I've gone for as well. So it gives you a few options there to think about. So go and check out Alex's vlog. I'm really dying to see what she's done. I'm really excited that we've done this collab. So redheads unite. I want to say a great big thank you for everyone for supporting me for my first year on YouTube. I have um, really thoroughly enjoyed it and I've got so many plans. There are so many things I can think of to hopefully inspire you for future episodes. So. Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, don't forget to head over and click on that little uh, red subscribe button and the notification bell to let you know of new episodes coming out. If you've enjoyed this episode, don't forget to give it a thumbs up because that helps other people like you find my channel. See you next time. Keep sewing and bye for now.